so I am a consulting engineer um, and I work for the, uh, the city of Broadhead. This project is all based on uh, new phosphorus regulations in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, very stringent uh, regulations came out around 2010 and uh, for the city of Broadhead that limit is a 0.1 milligram per liter limit which is not the most stringent in the state of Wisconsin, but it, it's definitely more stringent than what they had, uh, say, five years ago. I've been working on this project uh, in terms of planning since around 2013, and uh, part of the original, uh, I guess, scope of work was looking at how are we gonna meet this new phosphorus limit. And so we looked at a couple things. One, upgrading the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, I would say luckily for the, the city, they do have a, a relatively new um, and sophisticated treatment plant and so they can actually get the, the phosphorus numbers quite low. And so the watershed project in this case is substantially lower cost than the wastewater treatment plant project. The other, I guess, interesting aspect is uh, where the city of Broadhead is in the, the Sugar River watershed as a whole. Broadhead is very much so at the bottom of, of the watershed. And so the amount of phosphorus load that they actually produce to the Sugar River is maybe only half a percent, maybe less than that. Why would we spend $4.2 million $4.2 million to fix a, you know, a 0.5% of a problem when we can do something that's less expensive and potentially reduce more phosphorus than just at the treatment plant. One of, one of the interesting projects we worked on was uh, improving the, a local dairy farm. And I would say the, the interesting aspect or what we were able to provide at the project was a significant financial benefit to the landowner. And we did that really in two ways. One, the, the city of Broadhead, who is uh, taking these credits from the landowner. We paid them financially, one for part of the construction, a percentage of the construction cost, and then we also paid um, basically a subsidized rate for technical assistance or engineering, uh, which is, I would say in a lot of cases, when you're doing dairy farm projects, that can actually be one of the biggest hindrances, the cost for technical service. And so we were able to provide the construction and the technical service, and we also partnered this project through NRCS um, Equip, which is a program that's available nationwide to help fund projects on farms. And basically, uh, I think the way it would work out when this project's all said and done is, is the city paid a third, uh, NRCS paid a third, and the landowner will likely pay close to a third of the total project cost. Now we are a century farm. We've been 100 years last year. I'm third generation. My son's farm will be now fourth generation uh, milking around 200 cows right now, running about 500 crop acres. Started probably about five years ago, got contacted by representatives from the city brought it about doing a cost sharing project through the DNR, phosphorus trading credits. Years of work and legwork, we ended up going with them and doing a, the building we're standing in, and then 2.2 million <laughs> gallon uh, manure tank, and other projects, you know, clean water projects on the farm and then uh, converting over to no-till cropping systems. So We tore down two buildings and took out a small capacity manure pit and built this building which converted into 64 free stalls, calving, calving barn, holding area and a sick pen and then along with the manure storage and then we did a lot of runoff projects with all the rest of the buildings to try to keep clean water separated. With our lagoon that we built, we should be able to apply manure once once in the fall, maybe in the spring, um, kind of depending on where the weather lines up and we can get operators in to do that. Um, but then we should be able to do um, basically minimum tiller or no-till injection. So then, <clears throat> you know, we won't have runoff. We will have control of nutrients. We should be getting a bigger benefit out of the nutrients that are in the manure. I was brought in to help Rob and Jordan make some decisions about how do they want to improve their farmstead, how to, how to become a better dairy. We looked at manure management, we looked at lot management, we looked at feed systems, and from there we kind of create a short list and where are we going to optimize our phosphorus credits to help the city of Broadhead. So really it's a full all-encompassing system and I feel that's part of being successful with farmers is looking at them as an individual and prescribing a custom application that helps them improve, be sustainable, be environmentally friendly, manage land, be land stewards, and, and create that efficiency. 
as a resource consultant, I was brought in as, a te as technical assistance, and my fee was compensated through the city of Broadhead. So my knowledge of NRCS and the Equip Cost Share Program, in addition to the financial incentives that city of Broadhead was bringing, we were able to actually marry the two together and minimizing the overall cost to the farmer. We would have never been able to do this without that cost share money because we still should be getting between the city broad and an NRCS um, probably 60% cost share on it. The first reaction is like sure they're going to just give us money and it's like so it's pretty leery of it to begin with but then as we progress through the project looking at some of the options available to us and then um, it actually dovetailed into what we were doing quite well with my son buying in and doing some expansion and updating, so it actually did fit into our program quite well. And at one point, there was a group of us here, we were the young ones in the neighborhood, and we're all printer 60. I mean, everybody's in a different place. We were, I happened to be sitting here with a son that was graduating college and actually wanted to come back home. A lot of the other places here, I, I don't think anybody's got interest in sticking money in the updating dairy facilities. The City of Broadhead trading project really is made up of three types of projects. One is a facility or a structural project. The second one is a stream bank stabilization project. And the third one is more of a cropping practice. So with that, each one of them has pros and cons. And so when we improve facilities, they're fixed, they're permanent. Um, we typically are controlling the environment in some fashion as well as the operation and maintenance. And so we have a fixed ability to account for a certain number of pounds of phosphorus. The way this plan is set up now today is we actually have more credits than what the permit said we have to have. So it creates a lot of flexibility for us. So if there's a year where we have some flooding, we maybe have some other environmental issues, we have enough credits per se in the bank that offset our ability to maintain compliance with the permit.